Good morning, beautiful people on the internet. 2009 was a very, very different time in the world. There was no real phones or any really technology advanced things that you could hold. And with that, there was no real social media apps. Kids, they were playing outside on the fields, playing football, playing with their bicycles, playing with their whatnot. Whereas in these days, people sit inside, look at pixels on a screen and shoot out, oh, I've just headshot killed someone on Call of Duty. If you said that back in the 40s, you'd probably be going to prison. But as I said, today's day and age is very different to what happened or what was in 2009. In 2009, whilst Jensen Button was nearly losing the championship, but somehow managed to clinch it in the final race, the Germans were thinking of a lucrative deal. Something sprang to mind. Now at face value, it might seem a little fraudulent. Braun GP was bought for one pound off of Honda, and then Mercedes swoop in and buy the team for like 100 mil or something. Seems kind of fraudulent, but it, it's it, 100 mil is cheap compared to you can buy Haas today for a light Billy Haas, the worst team on the grid. This is what your average Haas race looks like, and when they score a P6, it's like Lewis Hamilton has just won his eighth championship. Celebrations are high, and that's just what it is. Easy, 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 easy. Get in P6, there, brother. P6. Woo. Whereas Braun GP had just won the championship, 100 mil. Yeah, that's light. And since that day, Mercedes were Mercedes, and Mercedes were back on the Formula One grid. Psst, psst. I know you want to subscribe. Psst, psst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that right now. Please, 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 please. An old season veteran in Schumacher partnered up with, well, what in his eyes was probably a toddler, but that toddler was faster than him on, like, most occasions. That's the most important, uh... Two Germans in the German team, that's like two Frenchmen in a French team. What could go wrong? <coughs> and honestly, not much actually did go wrong, but not much actually did go right at the same time. Mercedes weren't the, the flying silver arrows that they were back in the 50s, where they won, well, most championships, if not all of them that they were in. But of course, the team being a brand new team, you don't expect a team to win a championship in their first ever season. You didn't expect Haas to win the 2016 season, did you? You didn't expect Red Bull to win the 05 season, did you? No, I don't think so. So for Mercedes to even be somewhat mm, eh, in the scrap in those couple first couple three or four years, then honestly, I think that's a pretty solid W, staying in, well, the upper midfield, maybe even pushing up with, well, the top runners, honestly, impressive. And you know what was even more impressive than whatever they had going? Was the fact that Nico Rosberg was, well, pretty much slapping up, dominating Michael Schumacher, the seven-time world champion. <laughs> Nico Rosberg barely has any wins, barely has any podiums. That's like me going up to Magnus Carlsen and beating him in chess five games in a row. Now, however you might think the 2012 and 2013 were all right and good seasons for Mercedes back then, that's like, well, that's like Williams scoring points every single race. That's, that's something, whoa. But the thing is, 2013, 2012, they were little sacrifices in a big fight. You know, you gotta lose the battle so you can win the war. Shout out Heady1 for that one. Heady1 for that one, haha. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta lose the battle just so you can win the war. And honestly, everything was gambled onto 2014. The engine, the aerodynamic, and everything that came with it. The drivers as well. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, could he have fallen off? But it was kind of an actual miracle. Mercedes, they gambled correctly. They were unmatched in the engine department for like five years, and the aerodynamic department, well, it just kept getting better and better until it peaked in 2020. And your average race was just a Hamilton masterclass, every single race. A team that everybody wanted to see succeed because nobody wanted to see Sebastian Vettel win anymore because he just won like nine races in a row. How boring is that? I'm falling asleep looking at the screen. Sebastian Vettel win, win. After another win, after another win. Red Bull four years in a row. Kind of boring. I want to see something different. And honestly, something different is what everybody got. Because not only did they get new constructors champions, they got new driver champions, but it was all pretty much the same for like the next eight years. Yes, there might have been a couple championship attempts. Rosberg succeeded, but yet again, that was just another Mercedes driver. And Sebastian Vettel came so close. 
but he was even closer to the barrier when he actually got a chance to win. Fuck's sake. Fuck's sake. Sorry, guys. They peaked in 2020. They were unstoppable, flat out through Puon, winning every race unless he had COVID. I mean, Lewis Hamilton, unless he had COVID, then, oh, he's sick. He can't win. Do you know what? Give him a controller. Let him sit down on his sofa somewhere. I guarantee you, with a controller, he'd still win that race, even though everybody's in the... It was like sticking a souped-up Porsche GT3 into a go-kart race on a massive track. On a small, nimble track, fair enough, the go-kart will probably win. But a massive airfield and a couple corners. But a Porsche will take them any day, just like a math teacher who's teaching in university or college will be 1,000 times better than a kid in kindergarten. And the same thing that happened with Sebastian Vettel. People got bored of listening to that German anthem. People got bored of seeing the Red Bull on the top step. And honestly, the same thing happened with Mercedes. Everybody wanted someone else to win. And honestly, Max Verstappen came calling. But you should probably be careful what you wish for. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen, Red Bull domination, Max Verstappen, Max wins, Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen wins 10 Grand Prix in a row to take the all-time record. That's 88 missed podiums. <laughs> you wished for a great season, and a great season it was. There was drama, there was controversy, well, there was a lot of drama. And there was a lot of controversy. It's Verstappen, far enough back, he's going to make the lunge down the inside. Hamilton sees it coming, it's a late lunge by Verstappen. But the championship can only be won by one, and it's going Dutch in 2021. And the season ended in smiles and joy for the Red Bull garage, and in, well, pretty much tears for the other side of the garage. You should be careful what you wish for. But everybody must have some setbacks in their life. However, this car is so bad. Not only was the Mercedes 2022 car an absolute boat of a car to drive, it was dangerous. It was like driving an old BMW down some roads in Eastern Europe, which have potholes literally everywhere you look. The car was bouncing up and down, side to side, like a roller coaster. And it got to a point where Hamilton's back nearly broke in Baku. Now, honestly, talk of a fall off. Usually it takes teams a couple seasons, a couple years, decades to drop down slowly down the order. Ah, uh, one year you win, the next year you finish second, the next year third, fourth, and so on and so forth. But Mercedes, they go from an absolute dominant car to the next year actually having a potato as a car. Still, Lewis Hamilton at the helm, but the only difference is, is that he can't win a race and he can barely stand on the podium. Now at that point in my life, it kind of got me thinking, is Mercedes the next Williams? Williams, Nigel Mansell, winners upon winners upon winners, to now having Latifi, having Pastor Maldonado, having Logan Sargent in their team, and currently being last, second to last, third to last, in like the last five years, consistently they've been consistently warming up that p10 p9 p8 slot in the constructors every single year and that drop off well, will that happen to mercedes will we see mercedes win a championship in 2060 will that be the next time they actually win a race or do something significant you see, Mercedes back in their heyday when every single race just looked like a British anthem show. They were literally cooking on the straights. It was like they strapped a NASA rocket ship to the rear of that car. Every single race on both cars, they were unmatched. Even though Red Bull sometimes might have had a better chassis, but they were powered by Fiat Punto engines served from Renault. It meant that they, they, they weren't competing, unless it was Monaco. But then the, half the time, they fluked it or fluffed it or whatever you want to call it. But then 2022 comes along and everything just gets ripped to shreds. That's like the Mona Lisa being ripped up in half and no, 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 paint it again, but this time with your eyes closed. New fuel, new everything, it was a big disaster. But honestly, it wasn't awful. I mean, George Russell managed to, to win a race, but at the same time, Pastel Maldonado managed to win a race. That might just be one fluky race. 
And that's what it seemed like. Because they didn't win any more races in 2022. And then 2023 comes along. And they didn't win any more races. Their first winless season since 2011. And the depression of all the Mercedes fans actually started to hit. Hashtag Team Lewis Hamilton. Uh, I think they're becoming hashtag Team Max Verstappen. The car still had the same teething issues. And it was just kind of painful to watch, no? But then 2023 comes along. And the car is totally different. It's a design overhaul. It's brand spanking new. And surely that means it should be good. It's gone through the whole winter of testing. It's gone through pre-season testing. Surely that means it's meant to cook up on track. It's totally new. It's nothing like their old little shit box that they had. Right. You see, back in the day, it would have been a little joke of me saying, oh my god, 2022, in a couple years, Mercedes will not be battling the Red Bulls, will not be battling the Ferraris, but they will be battling the Hasses down at the bottom of the grid. And honestly, that's what it looked like at the start of the season. Not only were Mercedes one of the worst cars on the grid, they were awful for Mercedes standards, that was. And they were honestly closer to battling Kevin Magnussen, battling Nico Hülkenberg than ever even managing or fathoming to battle Max Verstappen, who was still on his winning and merry ways, winning every single race. Max Verstappen wins for Max Verstappen. 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 However, just like the darkness of the night sky, it doesn't last forever. Eight times we've said it before. Here's a night for you. Lewis Hamilton wins the British Grand Prix. Now, although up until Canada, the 2024 season on paper, or just in general, was one of Mercedes' worst ever seasons, they hadn't yet stepped on the podium in, like, the first 10 races of the season. Mercedes, a team that, like, three years ago was winning everything that there was to win, and now they're struggling to make it onto the podium? That doesn't make any sense. It's like a dog forgetting how to bark. It it, it comes one and the other. It's, it's not... That they're meant to be scoring podiums and wins, right? And honestly, kind of contrasting the weather in Canada, things actually started to get better. Not only did George Russell secure a pretty decent pole position and celebrated in decent manner. Honestly, that celebration of a pole position might go down in history, along with all of Alonso's dances that he's done in the past. And although George Russell only scored a mere P3 finish and Lewis Hamilton came home in fourth, Oh, third place? Damn, that is mad. That is so cool. But the thing is, right, it wasn't just a third place. It wasn't just a lucky third place that he got. He could have won the race, but, you know, George Russell being George Russell, he fluffed it. And this wasn't his first time doing it either. He's done it on multiple occasions. And who knows, maybe if he didn't make a couple of mistakes, he would have won. But that's if, buts, and maybes. That's like saying if my grandmother had balls, she'd be my grandfather. The big Lewis Hamilton scored a podium in the next race in Spain. Okay. Well, consistent podiums. That's good. Canada wasn't just a fluky track just because it was wet. They could stay with the big boys, Lando and Verstappen. And honestly, Austria kind of seemed like your mediocre normal race for Mercedes nowadays. George Russell was in P3. Yeah, on to score a podium. And I guess that was the end of Austria. Oh, they made contact. He's got a puncher. He's damaged his front wing. The leading contenders for the world championship come together at turn three. The crowd can't believe it. And George Russell will be looking at the gap. He's the man in third after Verstappen and Norris come together chasing the lead. George Russell. You can win. George Russell. George Russell wins. Now, it might not have been a win on merit. It might have been a little lucky. It might have been a little fraudulent it might have been well extremely lucky and extremely like mm, fraudulent but a win is a win you actually can't complain why would you complain a win is a win a full stop period yeah but at the end of the day don't celebrate too much you haven't just won a championship and you haven't even won the race on merit so mercedes with that fact at the back of their minds knew that they would it wasn't just oh, okay we won a race we can win all the races of the entire season now it was oh no we gotta keep on pushing just like lewis hamilton says never stop pushing back in the factory you got this keep pushing and i can't lie keep pushing they did silverstone comes around and it's a mercedes one two lockout on the front row who expected that 
I didn't. The race was fabulous. The race was marvelous. It was a one-two. Oh my God, it was a dream to watch. It was a treat. I was enjoying it so, so much. And honestly, who expected it? Because I didn't. George Russell's engine was about to blow up. Tom and Jerry before the race might have stuck a little dynamite thing into the engine. Or you got the people from Cars with that little camera waiting to click it and it blows up. Well, anyway, well, anyway, George Russell's car blows up, basically. But in pretty high spirits, Lewis Hamilton, for the first time in like two and a half years, managed to clutch up. He is not washed. What he is, is he is back. Eight times we've said it before, here's a night for you. Lewis Hamilton wins the British Grand Prix. What a victory. Hamilton is back. Maybe a couple tears were shed. Maybe I was actually happy for somebody else for the first time in my life. And maybe that sparked something new in my heart. Some certain kindness for others. And a happiness and joy. I was happy. I was happy for somebody else. Who expected that? Celebrations were in order, just like Harry Potter has just won the Quidditch World Cup or some kind of Quidditch tournament or got the most points for Gryffindor. Yay! And celebrations were due. Long overdue, because the last time he celebrated was 2021 Jeddah. And then the next race after that, it was just pure tears. And the best part of it all, it wasn't a fluky win. There were no red flags. There were no safety cars. There were no virtual safety cars. They weren't, there, there was zero yellow flags on the track anywhere throughout the whole race. And Lewis Hamilton, just on pure pace, managed to win. Last week, we were thinking, ah, oh, fluky win for Mercedes. Just like it was, yeah, you won in Sao Paulo 22, but then you were awful for like the next year and a half. But now, they, they've actually cooked on pure pace. They were cooking in the wet. They were cooking in the dry. They were, yeah, they were probably cooking a five-star bacon, egg, sausage, beef, barbecue. That was... Difficult to say after the race, but it was good. And Mercedes winning back-to-back -back races for the first time in like three years. I think they're actually back. They've risen to absolute glory, but then plummeted it down and fell off, off the face of a cliff. Just like Kermit the Frog did and splatooned into the ground. And quite literally, their car was splatooning into the ground in 2022 because of all the porpoising. And finally, after years and years of struggle, they might have made it back up to the top. They might be fourth on the constructors, but at least they haven't fallen from grace just like Renault did, just like Williams have done. But with Hamilton leaving at the end of the season, uh, will it be short-lived? But if they get Kimi Antonelli next year and the car's a championship-worthy car and they got George Russell, who, who knows, might still be bidding out. He won't be the mystic consistency that we knew him of or was at the start of 22. And you've got Kimi Antonelli, a rookie, who... Now look at Oscar Piastri, great driver, but he's just not as experienced as Lando Norris. But let's forget about that. Let's talk about that tomorrow. The thing that we just have to remember is that Mercedes are actually back and I'm happy. If you truly deep in your heart believe that Mercedes are back just like me and they're going to be competing for race wins and stuff and they've actually risen up from their big, big slump, let me know down in the comments and watch it. Subscribe and like, I don't know why you wouldn't. Have a safe and fantastic rest of the day. Don't die because you can't watch other videos. Blah, 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 blah. Have a safe, fantastic rest of the day. A peace. That's all, folks.